Awesome job on the do now. Uh, thank you guys for diving deeply into that and looking at this court case. We are now going to watch a four and a half minute video that is going to review Angle versus Vitaly. Use uh, this video to help fill in any gaps that you might have on the do now. Make sure you have all the key information, especially when it comes to the establishment clause and why things were determined the way that they were. I'm gonna go and start this video. Sound should be shared. Make sure you fill in your notes. Presents Supreme Court Briefs. New York, 1951. The State Board of Education said that students were to open each day with a non-denominational prayer. Students across New York were to say, quote, Almighty God, we acknowledge our dependence upon thee, and we beg thy blessings upon us, our parents, our teachers, and our country, unquote. Now, before some of you freak out, just calm down, all right? Calm down. The prayer was voluntary. It was purely promoted as a tool for character development. Now, I say voluntary, but if parents did not want their kids saying the prayer, they did have to take action, and it was kind of a pain in the butt. Well, in July 1958, the Board of Education of Union Free School District No. 9 decided to have its students say the prayer. Students could opt out with their parents' signature. However, a group of families complained that the prayer went against their religious beliefs. With the help of different organizations, the families decided to fight the prayer in court. Five parents, three Jewish and two who were just not that big on organized religion, sued the state school board president, William Vitale, on behalf of their children. They argued that the prayer violated the establishment clause of the First Amendment, which should be applied because of the due process clause of the 14th Amendment. Basically, it was a separation of church and state issue. Alphabetically, the first parent listed as a plaintiff was Stephen Engel, so he ended up being the one who got all the attention. Angle later recalled how his kids were bullied at school for the lawsuit, and other families received obscene letters and phone calls in the middle of the night. Vitaly and the school board argued that they did not establish one particular religion with the prayer, nor did they force students to say the prayer. They also brought up that the prayer simply reflected the country's religious heritage. In the state court system, Angle and his fellow plaintiffs had absolutely no success. In 1959, they lost their case before the Supreme Court of New York. The next year, they lost before the Appellate Division of the Supreme Court of New York. The year after that, they lost before the Court of Appeals of New York, where Chief Judge Charles Desmond wrote, quote, Not only is this prayer not a violation of the First Amendment, no decision of this or of the United States Supreme Court says or suggests that it is, but a holding that it is such a violation would be in defiance of all American history, and such a holding would destroy a part of the essential foundation of the American governmental structure." Unquote. Jeez, Charles. That was harsh. Anyway, Vitaly and company next, of course, appealed to the Supreme Court, where all of a sudden, things looked a lot better for them. The case was argued on April 3rd, 1962. On July 25th, the court ruled 6-1 to one in Vitaly and company's favor. Two of the justices, Felix Frankfurter and Byron White, didn't take part in the decision. The court said the prayer was unconstitutional Constitutional. Justice Hugo Black wrote the opinion for the majority, writing, quote, It is neither sacrilegious nor anti-religious to say that each separate government in this country should stay out of the business of writing or sanctioning official prayers, unquote. Basically, they agreed with the plaintiffs, determining the prayer broke the establishment clause of the First Amendment. The one dissenting opinion came from Justice Potter Stewart, who brought up early examples of religion and government, like In God We Trust being on coins. Angle v. Vitale reasserted the importance of the separation between church and state. It basically banned state officials from trying to make prayer an official part of public schools. And it was the first of several cases in which the court used the Establishment Clause to ban religious activities in public schools. The decision remains controversial to this day. Okay, we are going to transition to actually another video. Just give me one second to pull it up on YouTube. So that is Angle versus Vitaly. Take 30 seconds to fill in your notes wherever you need to. So you have 30 seconds to fill in those notes on the do now.
Okay. So now we're going to watch a quick uh, 80 second clip on J of JFK reacting to Angle versus Vitaly, and then we'll come back together for uh, progressing into document analysis. So this is going to be about 80 seconds long just to see how JFK reacted. The first question at President Kennedy's news conference deals with the Supreme Court decision that a New York school prayer violates constitutional separation of church and state. The president's statement is in the nature of an effort to calm the storm over the decision. Well, I haven't seen the measures in the Congress, and you'd have to make a determination of what the language was and what the effect it would have on the First Amendment. The uh, Supreme Court uh, has made its judgment. A good many people, uh, obviously, will disagree with it. Others will agree with it. But I think that uh, it is uh, important for us, if we're going to maintain our constitutional principle, that we uh, support uh, Supreme Court decisions, even when we may not agree with them. In addition, we have in this case a very easy remedy, and that is to pray ourselves. And I would think that uh, it would be a welcome reminder to every American family that uh, we can uh, pray a good deal more at home, we can attend our churches with a good deal more uh, fidelity, and uh, we can make uh, the true meaning of prayer much more important in the lives of all of our children. That power is very much open to us. And I would hope that uh, as a result of this decision that uh, all American parents uh, will intensify their efforts at home. Ah, as much as I love Crash Course, we're not going to watch Crash Course right now. Um, okay. YouTube's going out of control. Okay. So one thing I want to stamp with what JFK just said in that clip is what Angle versus Vitaly does. It does not stop students from praying at school. So if you guys were in the school building and you chose to personally pray before class, before lunch, whatever you would choose to do, you would legally be allowed to do that. What Engel versus Vitaly says is that schools, well, non-Christian schools, which are private schools or non-religious schools, any public school that gets government funds cannot obligate students to involve themselves with a prayer. And the teachers cannot sponsor or lead it. So like you could all choose to individually pray before lunch or class or whatever, but I would not be allowed to lead you because I am a leader. I am, um, I would carry in theory a level of influence over you by making that decision. Okay, so we are now going to transition to document one, which is the majority and the dissenting opinion. And what I want you guys to do while you read the majority and dissenting opinion, uh, the question actually, those opinions are on page two. And on page three, you're going to have the question, does a non-denominational prayer at the start of the school day violate the establishment of religion clause of the First Amendment? You're going to have seven minutes to do this. Do not move forward because we're going to complicate it after we decide if uh, the Supreme Court justices made the right decision in Engel versus Vitale. So you're going to have seven minutes to read the majority and dissenting opinion. Pages two is where you're going to read, and then you're going to answer the question on page three. Go ahead and get started. Seven minutes on the clock.
Four and a half more minutes. Four and a half more minutes. Three more minutes left, you should be work getting ready to start your response to the question. Be prepared at the end to copy and paste it into the Zoom chat. Three more minutes. Great, awesome work deep diving into the majority and dissenting opinions. Go ahead and take your response to that question. Does a non-denominational prayer at the start of the school day violate the establishment of religion clause in the first amendment? Go ahead and copy and paste your response to that question into the chat now.
Thank you, Erica. Thank you, Sierra. Even if you weren't able to finish, go ahead and copy and paste into the chat. Thank you, Naziah. Thank you, Duane. Can I hear from Dwayne and then Erica? Dwayne, then Erica, can you guys start us off? I said, uh, it's only, I said it only violates the amendment if they are, uh, if all the students are first to say the prayer. And build on that, Erica. I said that it does violate the Establishment Clause because it gives the school the right to promote a specific religion and imposes it on people with different beliefs. And I feel like that's not only a violation of establishment, but privacy. Um, Ariana, can you build on uh, Erica's point? You speak to the same thing, just with additional evidence. Um, yeah, I said yes as well, because despite it's not, I think that non- that word, the non dim yeah, that. It just means that it's not like referring to like a specific um, religious group or something, but like it's still like a public prayer or whatever. Like the school is leading, it's not like it's like individual praying. So like, yeah, I feel like it might be like go against the um, establishment clause. Awesome. Yeah, because that's the thing with Engel versus Vitali. It is not student individual prayer. It is a group prayer that is being led by, um, by a group. Oh, awesome, Montana, you actually just chatted something that I was going to focus this on. Can you build on Erica, Ariana, and Dwayne's point with that piece of evidence? Thank you. I just realized. Uh, Montana, I don't know if your mic is connected, but the um, I couldn't hear you. Did anybody else hear Montana? I still can't hear you. Uh, Montana, can you chat me and I'll try to see if we can problem solve the tech issue. Um, so something that Montana pointed out that I wanted to, to redirect our attention to is she just chatted me and said, yes, because that would mean that a specific group is favored. So I want to redirect us to the third section of the majority opinion that starts with one of the greatest dangers. Go back into the document. Again, this is the third section that says one of the greatest dangers. Reread that section. What is the harm of this type of prayer? Specifically, I want us to focus on the government's placing its official stamp of approval. 
Why is that important? Go ahead and chat me. How does that break the establishment clause? If a government is placing its official stamp of approval upon one particular kind of prayer. Go ahead and private chat me. Zira, can you unmute and uh, share what you just chatted me and build on that? I said it's allowing schools to say prayers only related to one religion and not all, which is basically discriminating against other religions, which causes a, a, a feud in the school, which you don't really want. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So for example, um, in the video that we watched earlier, uh, a few of the families that spoke out against this were Jewish families. They don't believe in a Christian prayer. So them having to remove themselves because they do not identify with the Christian form of prayer, that um, that segregates or pushes them outside of the collective norm that the school is trying to set up. So now that we've read the majority and partial, the majority and dissenting opinion, we're going to complicate this in terms of In terms of uh, not in terms of prayer by government officials, so you are now going to transition to page four of the classwork. I want you to take five minutes, and I want you guys to read this section about this other court case, Town of Greece versus Galloway. But I specifically want you to determine how would you rule, how would you decide. This, this court case based off of your understanding of the establishment clause. And then I'll tell you what the uh, Supreme Court said after. So take five minutes, read this passage and write out how you would rule.
two more minutes. Make sure in when you argue how you would rule. Make sure you have um, the establish your interpretation of the establishment clause. So make sure you have a constitutional basis for how you would rule. One more minute. Okay, go ahead and get ready to come back together in three, one. Okay, we're gonna pull. And just to give you guys some clarity, the Supreme Court ruled on this court case five to four. So it was a very close court case. So if you're not sure, go with your gut instincts because obviously there is a lot of debate about whether or not this uh, falls under the precedent of Angles versus Vitale. So listen to my question carefully and then we will poll. Does, just blanked on the court case name, does Greece versus Galloway, did the town of Greece violate the establishment clause? Did the town violate the establishment clause? Raise your hand on Zoom if you think yes. Got one. Anybody else think that they um, that they did? Okay, got two. Three. Four. <laughs> Okay, I looking at these names, I think you guys are just standing in solidarity with each other. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> I don't know if this is an unbiased <laughs> voting. Okay, go ahead and lower your hands. So I'm going to assume that that means everybody else would vote no. They did not break the supremacy clause. Um, Isis, can you tell us why you said they did? Say that one more time. Uh, why, why did you say no? I said no. Did you say yes. That is not constitutional. Okay. Um, yeah, so I yes, said it's not constitutional. Yeah, because it goes against the religious practices of the people who don't follow Christianity. And it will also cause them to, like we said, feel segregated from everybody else. And also, they said, um, hold on, where's the line? It says the second circuit reason that a reasonable observer could find that the town had endorsed Christianity. And that's basically saying that basically the whole town, like everything was based off like Christianity, I guess. And I said that also goes against um, the estab establishment clause because there are people in that town who don't follow Christianity. So for them to just make 
everything about Christianity is kind of violating everybody else's rights. Great, thank you, Isis. We're gonna try out Montana's microphone one more time. Uh, my, uh, Montana, would you mind unmuting and building on whatever Isis said? Okay, uh, Montana, it's still not working. So I'll send an email to <laughs> Ms. Anderson and I will CC you in the email to see if we can figure out what's going on. Um, but thank you so much for engaging with class. I'm so sorry that your mic isn't working. Um, okay, let me hear from the no side. Do I have a volunteer from the, no, they did not break the establishment clause. Erica, go for it. From the way that I'm interpreting what happened, which is that there's these town meetings and the boards decide to pray and whatever, like that seems to be like a consensual thing. Like, and then these two women like heard about it or like saw that it was happening and felt some type of way. If that is what is happening, I feel like it is constitutional for people at a town meeting to practice and exercise whatever um, belief they want, especially as long as everyone's comfortable. Like just because you're Christian doesn't necessarily mean you feel uncomfortable when you hear a Jewish prayer, you know what I mean? It's all religion, it's all love for the most part. So like, I don't think that they should be penalized for practicing their religion as long as like nobody feels uncomfortable. If these were people who were sitting there like listening to the prayer and feeling uncomfortable and like constantly telling them that they don't like it that's a different situation to me but if they were just like overhearing a consensual and fine prayer like I don't understand why it would be unconstitutional again this was a 5-4 decision in the supreme court they were really torn I'm going to highlight two major differences between these two court cases and see if that changes anybody's opinion. In Angle versus Vitali, it was, it was children and these prayers were performed by school leaders. In Greece versus Galloway, it was adults volunteering to join the town meetings and there were volunteer leaders who prayed. And there were volunteer religious leaders that prayed, not government officials. So because of that reasoning in the town of Greece versus Galloway, the Supreme Court ultimately ruled that they did not break the establishment clause. But again, they ruled 5-4. They were really torn about it. Um, so thank you guys so much for engaging with the Supreme Court case like this. That is something we are going to be doing more frequently when it comes to our Supreme Court case uh, discussions, which we will have two of next week. One of, two of, I can't remember. Um, no, just one Supreme Court next week. Um, so thank you guys so much for engaging with that. As a reminder, your homework is due Monday, 8 p.m. Make sure you, it's a hefty chapter, so make sure you put in the work uh, starting tonight so that way you don't have to cram it all in on Monday. Go ahead and transition to the exit ticket. For number one, just identify the key difference, and I gave you guys a little bit of a hint there. And for number two, you are just writing a thesis. You don't need to write a full paragraph. Please chat me if you have any questions. <laughs> 